welcome to WT Tone. In this video, we are gonna talk about the PRS SE Starla. Now this guitar belongs to a friend of mine. He recently bought it brand new uh, for about $500. I think they go for a little bit more than that uh, typically, but it was like a closeout deal. It's one of the import, uh, the SE, uh, versions of a PRS guitar. This one says on the back, built by Cortec Instruments under exclusive license for PRS. This is one of those built in Indonesia. Uh, and it's a great representation of the SE lineup from PRS. That is their import line. Now the Starla, if you don't know, has a bit of a history from PRS. And it's always been one of my favorite guitars that they made. Um, probably like maybe 10-ish years ago, it's been years back, the Starla started out as a core model guitar, meaning like the, the core stuff is the high end, the higher end uh, offerings from PRS that come out of, um, that come out of Maryland in the US. It's kind of a take on their single cut. I believe the original ones had a Bigsby uh, tailpiece uh, system in them and they had sort of their own uh, Starla pickups. They always sounded to me kind of like what PRS would do if they went after like the Gretsch thing. Uh, so they started as a core model and then they were introduced in the S2 lineup. If you're not familiar with the S2 lineup, it is a little bit more affordable offering from PRS still made in the US. They use some import parts like pickups and hardware in the S2 lineup. I actually owned an S2 Starla for a little while. It also had, it looked exactly like this. Mine was a sunburst, but like the, the shape and the layout of the guitar was exactly like this, but it had a Bigsby on it. Um, and then the S2 uh, Starla sadly went away. I thought that was a really cool guitar. It had a really uh, great price point for what you get. Uh, and then they introduced it recently as an SE model with a uh, hardtail bridge. So I'm gonna break this uh, video up into uh, kind of three or four different parts. We're gonna talk about just the overall layout of the guitar, what you get, fit and finish, things like how well is the fretwork done, you know, how well is it put together. Then we're gonna go feel and playability, and then we'll talk tone. <laughs> So its configuration is pretty simple. Uh, you got like this Gibson style uh, uh, bridge setup, um, tailpiece and bridge setup, volume, tone. Uh, you heard me in the intro use the coil split. So the, the tone knob pulls out to split the coils of the pickup. Uh, and it works really well. I'll demonstrate that in a bit. Two humbuckers, uh, the, uh, these are the SE version of the Starla pickups. They are their own kind of thing, kind of bright, jangly, but they do work well in both full humbucker mode and the split mode. Uh, the SE version comes with, these are the PRS standard SE tuners. Um, this is like a, uh, you know, like a synthetic nut material, uh, sort of that slippery, you know, kind of like a, uh, graph tech kind of a thing. Uh, adjustable, uh, saddles, adjustable, uh, you know, bridge set up, just a really solid single cut uh, type guitar. It does have 22 frets, it has PRS's 25 inch scale length. The neck is super comfortable. I'm not exactly sure, I'll put it in here what neck carve this is. <laughs>
let's move on to fit and finish. This is typical PRS. Uh, even on the SE lineup, like the lower end models from PRS, it's pretty much perfect. I can't find anything wrong uh, with this guitar. It plays great, it feels great, everything on it feels solid. Uh, I tweaked the truss rod just a little bit. The action came a little high, which is typical from uh, like an import guitar. They'll set the action a little higher uh, just because they don't know where it's gonna go. All these SC guitars go from wherever they're built, uh, China, Indonesia, that kind of thing, to uh, PRS here in the United States in Maryland, and then they ship it out to different distributors. I think this one came from, it had a Chicago Music Exchange sticker in the box, so it probably went Indonesia, Maryland, Chicago, North Carolina. So it's gone around, um, so you can't expect a guitar to come perfectly set up when it travels, you know, that much. So I did tweak the truss rod a little bit, I lowered the action on the guitar, set the intonation, which was pretty much perfect. Um, PRS does do like a setup on these before they ship them off to their dealers. Uh, and uh, that was pretty much it. One, the, the one thing I'm really impressed with on this guitar, and this is the same for pretty much every PRS that I've ever played, is the fret work. These frets are smooth and glassy. Sometimes when you get an import uh, guitar, that's on the budget end of a, of a manufacturer's, you know, um, lineup, like a Squire or something like an Epiphone, um, the frets will be a little bit uh, scratchy. And that's just because they're not polished. And it's really easy to do. You just buy a fret polishing kit. And maybe I'll make a video and show how I do that. Um, I would love to start like making a series of setup videos. So that might be coming in the future. But it would take you just a few minutes just to go over and polish the frets up make them like glass. Uh, these pretty much were like that. The ends of the frets are really smooth. Uh, no sharp fret ends. They're actually really nicely rounded over. Feels very comfortable to play. The, uh, the edge of the fretboard, I wouldn't say it's rounded, but it's definitely not sharp. The neck carve feels super comfortable. Um, most of PRS's stuff has like a pretty flat fretboard radius. It feels very comfortable to play. This type of a setup on a guitar is really solid as far as holding tune and that kind of thing. So very impressed with the build quality, what you get with the SE series. Um, you know, the, the, um, the pots all feel nice and solid. Uh, this one's a push pull blade feels pretty good. I know my friend uh, who bought this guitar is planning to put some uh, locking tuners in. You can buy them from PRS. Uh, and they'll fit right in. I think they have a series that's made for the SE lineup. Um, and I think he said he might put a new switch in, although that's something that you definitely wouldn't need to do that. Uh, but you know, these are the things that would over time, if they're lesser quality parts, they'll wear out, but they're really easy to, to replace. But uh, the way it feels, you know, the way it plays feels really good. I wanna demonstrate how loud this guitar is. It was kind of an impressive thing to me. It, it rings and it sustains for a long time. He's still going. You go get a bite. It's still going. You hear it? There you go. Anyway, jokes aside, it rings out. Great sustain. <laughs> tone. I'm just going to demonstrate the different pickup positions. I'm running through an Axe FX3. 
Uh, and uh, with a matchless DC30 amp model, this is our worship tutorials uh, preset that you can buy from the website. It sounds like this. I'll go bridge, middle, neck. This is clean. Just a little bit of reverb. I turn the delay off. Here we go. <laughs> So I'm going to show you what the coil split sounds like. I'll play a uh, chord, do the coil split, and uh, you'll hear, hear it back to back. Full humbucker and then coil split. <laughs> Okay, just from the clean sounds, one thing that strikes me is the bridge has a really nice uh, bite. It's got like some output too. You heard it's driving this clean uh, scene uh, pretty hard on the bridge pickup. Uh, I set the bridge pickup height pretty high. I like that on a guitar. If you'd lower it a little bit, it would probably hit the amp, you know, hit the model or whatever with less uh, level. Um, but I like the way that sounds. The bridge, nice and clear. It's got some nice bite to it. Very articulate. It's a little bit chimey. The middle position sounds really good on this guitar. The neck, if I had one complaint, the neck pickup felt a little bit muddy to me. So I feel like if you would EQ the amp around the neck pickup, uh, the bridge might feel a little bright and shrill. And if you EQ the amp around the bridge pickup, the neck might feel just a little... A little muddy. It's a minor uh, complaint. I mean, the neck pickup sounds really nice. Then, if you split it, it still sounds really good. It's just really full. Uh, one person's warm is another person's muddy. So it's really just, you know, kind of what you prefer. And in the middle position, when you split it, it kind of gets like a little, a little bit stratty, you know? You know, you can kind of do that thing with it. Really versatile. And then in the, you know, I turned the reverb off so you could really hear it. In the bridge position, split, it has like that single coil spanky. So that was split and uh, full and two very different sounds. You notice there wasn't a volume drop. One thing PRS does really well are those split sounds. So um, really great and they're very different sounds. So very different, both very usable. Uh, and you can split it and you don't get like that drop in volume that you usually get. So it makes this guitar a very versatile guitar to use for a lot of different stuff. All right, let's hear some gain sounds. Here's like a king of tone. So a little bit more, a little bit more gain. <laughs> Gain it up even more. I'm gonna turn like the amp gets cranked up. This is like a big rhythm type of a So here would be the neck position on like a big rhythm sound, like if you want to do a, a neck position solo. So 
let's see how it does the praise and worship lead thing. Uh, if you're not familiar, if church music isn't you, what you do, uh, it's basically all the drive with all the wet effects, reverbs and delays, which you might think that would sound like mush. It can if you don't do it, if you don't set it up right. Uh, but this is what it sounds like. I think th these pickups, this guitar handles all these wet effects uh, really nicely. Check it out. <laughs> So it will do like the big, you know, wet affected praise and worship lead thing. Uh, the pickups have a ton of clarity, especially this bridge pickup and chime is really one thing you need to pull that sound off. But it will do the classic rock kind of big rhythm thing too, uh, like this. <laughs> That's just big, meaty, awesome tone right there. So overall, I think this thing really nails uh, the versatility that you might want, that you might think of when you think of PRS guitars. Um, it'll do the clean, chimey thing, especially with the, the, the coil splits, but even in full humbucker mode, it'll do that really well. And it'll do like the big rock tones, it handles effects really well. I think the pickups have a nice voice to them. Uh, they have this chimey clarity thing that you might think of. It's not like, it doesn't sound like a Gretsch Filtertron to me, but it does sound like a brighter, like more articulate type of a humbucker sound uh, that works really well for a lot of different styles. I mean, you're hearing it, so you can be the judge of whether you think it would work well for you. But personally, I'm impressed with the way these uh, pickups sound and this guitar sounds and feels straight out of the box, given it, especially given its price point, but really at any price point. It's just a great sounding, feeling guitar. <laughs> So in conclusion, I, uh, I've said this before, I've owned a few and played a bunch of SE uh, PRS guitars. I think they just get better and better and better. The more, you know, the more that they improve on the different models. That's the thing about PRS, they're constantly making improvements to the models of their guitars. Um, so what they've got going now, uh, we have another PRS SE guitar. We have a Tremonti here in the room. It's a completely different thing. It's also a single cut, but it sounds way different. Uh, it feels similar. Um, I prefer, you know, personally, I like the way this sounds just because these pickups are a little bit more my style, but uh, both of those SE guitars sound, feel, and play great. We reviewed the SE uh, hollow body piezo guitar that PRS recently put out. Bradford has that guitar. Uh, what an awesome guitar for the money. It's a little bit more than like what this guitar would be just because of the construction and everything. It's a little more complicated to make and it has a piezo in it, but great sounding instruments at a really affordable price point. I've said this to, to many people, probably online and on the internet, you know, in Facebook groups. I think PRS makes the highest quality bang for your buck guitars of any of like the major guitar manufacturers out there. Certainly other builders make awesome stuff at this price point, like the Squire stuff from Fender that they're putting out right now is really good. Gibson just upped the game on their Epiphone line. Those are great guitars. It would be really cool to get one of those and review it. I haven't played one of the newer Gibsons. I've only heard that they're very good. Uh, but the older Gib the or the Epiphones, but the older Epiphones are also very good. So if they got better, then uh, I'm sure they're impressive instruments. But I think PRS just kills it with the the SE the SE lineup. And there's a ton of models in that lineup as well. You've got the Starla. Um, you can go to their website and pick it. But like you've got modern type stuff from like the custom. You've got you know really hard rock sort of uh, flavored things like the Tremonti, and there's a few other artist models that are that are really um, 
you know, fit that genre really well. You got the vintage thing with the, the Starla, and I think there's a couple other options in the lineup that are a little more vintage flavored. Um, so really just a wide lineup of instruments from PRS and the SE lineup at great price points. I've always been impressed every time I pick one up. The Starla is no exception. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, this is the moment. This is your moment to make it happen. We can't wait for you to see all of the other videos that we're gonna upload here. Uh, so do it if you haven't done it already. We would love it if you would subscribe. Share this with your friends if you know someone who's interested in one of these guitars. They're fantastic. Hey, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.